What's up, everybody? Thank you for joining me. I am Jay, and I'm excited that I'll be doing a video series this whole week on video editing using Premiere Pro. Now, I will be covering things like the user interface, the editing tools, the video effects, audio, animation, keyframing, and finally, exporting. Now, if you do not have a copy of Premiere Pro on your computer, you can get a seven day free trial on their website. The link is down below. Now, something you may not know about me is I really enjoy learning and I enjoy reading and listening to audiobooks. So for this series, I thought it'd be appropriate to make some editing recommendations. So the first recommendation I have for you is In the Blink of an Eye is a book by Academy Award winning editor Walter Murch. You can find that right now on Amazon used for about seven bucks. Link is down below. Now, this next recommendation that I have for you is an editing documentary that's a lot like sitting with your favorite filmmakers as they talk about the challenges that they faced while they were making their blockbuster films. Now, I can't recommend this documentary enough. I actually have it here for my film students, and that documentary is called The Cutting Edge the magic of movie editing. Now, for this video, my original intent was to do an overview of the user interface, but after a few attempts, it became very clear to me that each window needed its own video. And since I didn't want to shortchange those of you that have never used Premiere Pro, and I didn't want to rush this, I want to explore in this video all the features and functions of the project window. So let's get into it. <laughs> So we're gonna jump right in. I'm gonna launch Premiere Pro. Like I said before, if you don't have Premiere Pro, you can get a free seven day trial at adobe.com so you can follow along. Okay, so I'm gonna jump into the um, project window. Here we are. So in the project window, essentially what the project window is, is a closet for your project where you are going to rename, store, and arrange your video footage, your audio files, your stills, and graphics. Everything that you're going to use to create your final movie will be stored and arranged here in the project window. Now, I'm going to go ahead and bring some things in. So I'm going to go to File, Import, or you can hit Command I, or you could just simply double click here. So I'm going to hit uh, double click here and I'm going to be able to bring in, for example, I'll bring in, you can bring in individual files or you can bring in entire folders and I'm going to bring in individually the audio files just to show you that. So instead of uh, clicking the folder, I'm going to actually select all the audio files and hit import. As you can see, uh, I have my audio files and I have my video files in here. You can tell the difference by the icons. Uh, so this little icon here is a waveform, whereas the icons here are a purple uh, film strip and a waveform. So this is video and audio, and this one up here is just audio. Now I can create bins by going down here to the uh, new bin icon or the icon that looks like a folder down at the bottom right. So now I can make a folder and call this 2.audio and I can take all of my audio fo files and put it inside of that bin and now my folders are nice and tidy and organized. The other thing that I can do is that as you can see there is a square here and that uh, notates uh, color in a, in a color scheme that all of these files are green when I bring them down to the timeline. So I can actually change that and I can go down to label and I can change that to a different color. So for example, I can change it to say yellow and now that folder itself will be yellow. Now if I hit the tilde key and I show you how beneficial this can be in a scene here, you can actually have one person in one color and uh, another person in another color. You can get very creative as far as how you use this, but this is just one illustration. Now going back to here, you have different ways of viewing your footage. You can view your footage in list form, or you can view your footage in um, icon view. 
So in icon view, you're going to get a little picture here, little thumbnail. Uh, the cool thing about icon view is that you can actually change the thumbnail. This thumbnail here is not very informative, but if I were to scroll through it and say I like that, I can select it and hit command P on a Mac or shift P on a PC. And now that icon is more informative for me at a glance. You can do that with every single one of the clips. The other uh, way of looking at your footage is by freeform. It looks like icon view, but it actually lets you drag them and kind of separate them. This is a great way to kind of group uh, files together like so. And let's say you wanted to do a rough cut just kind of by just arranging files. This would be kind of cool. You can find a creative way to use, use it. Now, the other thing that you can do in the project window is that if you have duplicates and you're not aware of it, you can actually, with the project window selected, you can go to edit and remove duplicates. Uh, similarly, you can actually remove unused footage if you want to declutter your uh, timeline. Now, another cool feature of the project window is you can conform uh, things that were shot at 120 frames per second to 24, essentially making them slow motion. And I'll show you this shot. This shot is essentially a slow motion shot. Now, when I look at it in the list view, you can tell that the frame rate is different. It's 120 frames per second. Um, this is because of the drop frame, but basically what I'll do is I'll double click on it and I'll bring it down to the timeline. And as you can see, it is just me pouring water in a cup. Now, this is playing at regular speed, but if I wanted this to play at slow motion, I could actually, in the project window, I can right click and I can go to modify, interpret footage, and conform this 20, uh, 120 frames per second to 24 frames per second. And I'm gonna hit OK. And now when I bring the same exact clip, it should be twice as long, as you can see here in the timeline. And when it gets to the pouring, it's actually in slow motion, as you can see. So now on the other side, you have a feature called automate to sequence. So let's say I had a bunch of pictures and I want to do, do a slideshow. I could essentially take all of those pictures. Let's make believe that these were all pictures and I can click this and automate the sequence. And what it would do is it would drop it down on the sequence depending on my preferences up here for in the timeline setting stills, uh, still image default uh, duration. So if I made this, you know, five seconds or I made this 10 seconds, when I drop it to the timeline, each picture will be 10 seconds or five seconds, depending on what I set in here. Now you've got the find, so you can actually find things if you wanted them, if you had a lot of metadata. And the other, this one here is just creating a new bin, which is essentially a new folder, which would allow you to, uh, tidy up your timeline or sorry tidy up your project like this so this and this would actually go in here and you would have a very neat and tidy timeline by using bins now the last thing i want to go over and i'll hit the tilde key again to make this larger all this information here can be broadened or shortened. So for example, if I didn't want the audio information, I had no need for it, I can just simply right click and go to the media display, metadata display, go to the top one here, and I can simply just get rid of that. So the audio info, I can go ahead and get rid of audio info and hit okay. And as you can see, the audio info is gone. If I wanted more information, I can just go on there and selectively click on what I wanted to add and display that information in there. Again, the project window is where you uh, sort non-destructively all of your media and assets from video, stills, graphics, sound effects, everything that's going to make it into your project. And that's pretty much the project window in a nutshell. So now you should have a really good understanding of all the features and functions that the project window has to offer for you. And 
in organizing your project. If I miss anything, make sure you leave a comment down below. The next video will be covering the source window and all its functions and features. As always guys, tell a friend to tell a friend, subscribe if you haven't already, hit that bell for notifications. Until next time, keep shooting y'all. What's up everybody, thank you for joining me. Sorry, I'm eating. I shouldn't, I shouldn't be eating while I'm doing this. I'm almost done. <laughs> Let's do this again.